Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, knife uh, arguments for knife fighting the non-dominant hand. In this class, we teach you to fight with a knife in your other hand, let's say. Uh, most knife fighting is taught using the dominant hand. Being that this course is not, it is practical to explain why this course focuses on the non-dominant hand for knife fighting. When fighting, we are accustomed to leading with our non-dominant hand. Since it is commonly accepted uh, that it is an advantage to fight with a knife in the lead hand, we will not have to learn to fight from a different stance if we fight with a knife in our non-dominant hand. So let's say this. Here I am, a regular guy. I'm going to fight in a fighting stance with the left lead because I'm right-handed. Okay. So here's my lead. Okay, so now I've got a knife fight. Oh, well, I want that knife in this hand. So now all of a sudden, here I am fighting in this type of a stance, which is uh, you know, the opposite stance to the other one. So now I'm going to be training in this stance while I'm knife fighting, and then I'm going to be training in this stance while I'm fist fighting. So I'm getting half of my training with this lead and half of my training with this lead if I 50-50 my training. Of course, if I do more training like this, then I'm only getting a smaller amount of training with this lead. But if I fight fist fight, you know, I'm right handed, I fight in an orthodox stance, and then when I knife fight, I fight in an orthodox, uh, orthodox stance, I'm getting 100% of my training in the stance that I'm most likely to be using, whether I have hands, uh, hand to hand, or I'm using a, a weapon, a knife in a fight. Okay, that's one argument. Okay, the next one is, uh, Knife fighting with our non-dominant hand will free up our dominant hand to do the fine motor skills of checking, trapping, and empty hand counter-attacking. So again, if I'm using the knife and all of a sudden I see an opportunity where I can hit this guy with a cross or a face smash or you know something like that, now I'm going to do it with my left hand, my weaker hand I'm going to be relying on to get this job done. I mean, if I have the knife in my left hand, my left hand is pretty, pretty uh, lethal. Okay? Now when I've got to go for that knockout blow, I've got my dominant hand to deliver that knockout blow. So let's see, uh, or trapping or you know whatever. Our non-dominant hand uh, may never be able to master the concepts uh, to the same level as our dominant hand. But since the knife is a much more effective weapon than the empty hand, the motor skills required do not have to be as fine to still get the highly effective results of using the weapon instead of my empty hand. Uh, another reason. If our knife fighting training is with the dominant hand in the lead position, we have a big question about what lead and concepts to use when we are unarmed versus a knife. Uh, do I go to a knife fighting stance and try to, uh, you know, counter the knife because that's what I, whenever I'm fighting a knife, you know, I've got my knife in my hand and now I'm leading this, now I'm all of a sudden empty handed, which stance do I go to? So I've got a question there. So if I'm training uh, to knife fight with my non-dominant hand uh, in the lead position, it's going to be the same in either situation. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the stance and knife fundamentals uh, and concepts in this course only require slight variations uh, when we're armed or uh, unarmed. So again, we can get 100% of the training in the method uh, of fighting that we're most likely to use uh, because we're only going to have one choice. Okay, let's see the next uh, reason. A knife fighter properly trained to fight with his non-dominant hand will be a more skilled knife fighter than an untrained, less trained knife fighter fighting with his dominant hand, uh, unless there is an extreme physical mismatch. So again, you're going to learn to fight with a knife in your uh, non-dominant hand, okay? You're taking a course to do this. So you're learning very specific stuff and you're going to become skilled in this knife fighting technique with your left hand, okay? Now let's take a guy who's never taken a knife fighting course. Maybe he's played around with a knife a little bit. He's got the knife in his right hand, his dominant hand, and here he comes to mug you, okay? You see a situation uh, in the parking lot arising that makes you uncomfortable. Uh, the guy is hanging out by the elevator when you get you know, to your floor, and as you start walking to your car, you see the guy following you. Well, if you have your gun or your knife, you're gonna have a choice, which one do I wanna get ready first? But you need to be getting one ready right now. There's nothing wrong with getting it ready, and then he walks by your car and you get in your car. Okay, he didn't attack you. Well, guess what? You got practice in, so that's a good thing. So now this guy starts following us, so we slip our hand into our left pocket and we pull our knife out, okay? So now our knife is in our, in our hand. And uh, this guy comes up and he's got it in his right hand 
you see the knife flash, you pull your knife, you face off with this guy, and now what do you have? You have him with his dominant hand, no training. You with your non-dominant hand, training, okay? You're gonna win this fight. You're probably gonna win this fight easily, okay? Because this guy doesn't really know what he's doing. So did it matter that the hand was your right hand or your left hand that you had the knife in? No, what happened was you had your hand in a trained hand. I mean, you had your knife in a trained hand versus he has his knife in a lowly trained hand. You're gonna win that fight. So it's not gonna matter. I mean, the, the, the greater level that you would possess because you went through the course with the knife in your right hand, you know, it's gonna be incremental compared to your skill over him either way. You know what I'm saying? Because your skill is gonna be lifted and his skill is gonna be here. So, I mean, oh, if you had in your right hand, you'd be this much. Oh yeah, but you still have your right hand. So, you know, yeah. is it really a loss? You know, I mean, it's, I think it's negligible at best. And let's see, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for a couple years. I'm very happy with the knife in my left hand. I mean, I'm just, I'm just comfortable like that. I mean, that, that's my, that's my dominant hand now with a knife. I right. mean, when I do centrifugal openings, I do a centrifugal opening better with my left hand than my right hand, even though I'm right-handed. Of course, you know, how had a hand that got blown up. Right hand doesn't help much, but let's see. Uh, okay, so uh, if we predominantly train a knife fight with our dominant hand, and that hand is injured. Okay, now here's another reason, okay. So here I go through the course and I decide, I don't want to do it with my dom my non-dominant hand. I want to do it with my dominant hand because that hand's going to be incrementally better, okay. And I really don't care about having to throw a punch with my left hand that it's going to be weaker or trying to trap, you know, with my left hand. It's going to be weaker. I don't care about all that. I want that knife in my right hand. Okay, so now you're in the knife fight and bing, your right hand got injured. You're cut. You have time to pick the knife up again and because you're thumb of your right hand is chopped off, you got to use your left hand to pick it up. So now guess what? You're in a life and death situation with your non-dominant hand that you haven't trained. Okay? So now, would you rather be in a situation where one of your, where your knife fighting thumb is going to get cut off, okay? Would you rather it was your left thumb or your right thumb? Your left thumb. Because now when I got to pick up that untrained when I have to use that untrained hand to pick up that knife, I want that untrained hand to be my dominant hand. Yeah. So that's a huge advantage. So again, uh, just another one of my uh, little reasons. And let's see, where was that one? Da, 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 da. Okay, so if our non-dominant hand is injured and we are forced to use our dominant hand, our decrease in skill will be much less than it would have been if we'd had to pick up the untrained, uh, use the untrained non-dominant hand to pick up that knife and fight. I mean, that skill, level would be huge, a huge uh, depletion in our skill level. Okay, and uh, again, uh, if you, you know, once you've taken the stick fighting course, it really won't matter because it's, stick fighting and knife fighting uh, can be very similar, let's yeah. say. And once you go through the uh, the clubber course, you know, we fight with the club in our right yeah, hand. Well, mainly I'm just talking about, you know, improvised weapon, mm -hmm. because nobody carries around sticks. I mean, everybody loves this Eskrima and Arnis and all this, oh, I'm a stick fighter, I'm a stick fighter. Where are your sticks 90% of the day? They're sitting in your trunk, yeah. okay? Or they're in your gym bag, wherever your gym bag is. You don't carry around freaking clubs. Yeah. So clubs can only really be considered a weapon of opportunity. And that's really it. I mean, there's some nice benefits to stick fighting. When you start doing dos pares, where you get both hands, you know, you force both hands to be moving in combination and combination. There's some nice stuff there. Uh, it, it's, it works real well. Uh, Know, for the Wing Chun type stuff, this two-fisted fighting thing where you're blocking with one hand while you're punching, works real nice there. So, I mean, there are some definite benefits to stick fighting, but again, you know, uh, as a primary art, while it does have some nice side benefits, I wouldn't pick it as a primary art because you just don't have sticks with you. You don't carry sticks around. You're much more likely uh, to be carrying a knife around. I mean, go to the bar tonight and ask all your customers, do you have a stick or a knife on you? And you're going to have a hugely uh, outweighed percentage of people have knives on them if one guy is carrying a stick. You know, I mean, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so anyways, uh, da, 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 da. okay, when we are fighting out with a weapon, the threat's attention will be directed towards the weapon, and often his actions will be solely directed at gaining control of our weapon or on taking our weapon out of the fight. If we have a knife, 
the threat will have to default his actions toward our knife instead of the weapon. I mean, excuse me. If he knows what he's doing, he's going to have to default his actions towards our knife hand instead of the weapon. Uh, when we are using our non-dominant hand to knife fight, our dominant primary hand will still be free to go for a secondary weapon. We talked about that a little bit. This is especially important if our choice for a secondary weapon is our firearm or an empty hand strike. If our dominant hand held the knife and was being held by the threat, we would have a hard time getting to our firearm or striking effectively with our non-dominant hand. So those are arguments. Uh, I think this uh, keeps going. Okay, one dominant hand. Uh, our dominant hand will be responsible for handling club weapons, and fortunately, the concepts are similar to knife uh, to handling a knife. Uh, using a club weapon with the dominant hand does not pose the same problems as using a knife in the dominant hand. First off, damage to the hand is less likely due to the added reach. Also, if the threat gains control of the baton, uh, it will be pro it will probably be because the baton has been grabbed. At which point, we can release the baton and go for our firearm, or we can maintain our grip and go for our knife with our non-dominant hand. So again, that's the advantage of having the stick in the right hand. Uh, it just plays well in the big picture better. Uh, to continue on the subject of going for a secondary weapon, what if an injury to our knife hand is the reason we want to go for our firearm? Do we want to draw our firearm with a hand that couldn't continue to hold a knife? Again, if we're fighting with a knife on our you know, right hand, we get cut, we lose a knife, and we say, oh, it's time to go for the gun. Well, our, our gun shooting hand is now injured, so that's a problem. Uh, what if our secondary weapon is only our empty hand? Do we want to attempt a knockout punch with our injured dominant hand? Same situation. We get cut, the knife falls, now I gotta try to knock this guy out or I gotta try to grab that knife uh, from him to protect myself. And you know now I've got an injured dominant hand. Uh, let's see, uh, here's our last scenario. Let's say our handgun runs out of ammunition while we are still under attack. And our last line of defense is our knife. Are we gonna throw away a solid chunk of metal that fits nicely in our hand so that we can now employ our knife. So in other words, if I only <clears throat> knife fight with my right hand, my knife is probably gonna be set up on my right hand side. So I'm shooting my weapon and for some reason, I don't have enough bullets to get the job done. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, what's my next lethal weapon? Oh, I still have a knife. <laughs> so I throw this nice chunk of steel away and now I go for my knife. Yeah. Whereas I could hold this chunk of steel and still be trying to beat you in the head with it while I go for my knife, and now I have two chunks of steel to beat you with. I mean, just another situation in the in the total concept of fighting. Uh, while we still, uh, da, da, da. and wouldn't it be better if we could handle the pistol frame in our dominant hand like it was a club, while, and we train to fight with a club in our right hand, and uh, walk confidently handling our knife in our other hand. So that's another advantage here. Uh, to use a poker term, uh, using the knife with our non-dominant hand gives us extra outs. Uh, we have found that after we go through the lessons and skill sets and analyze our weaknesses after lessons uh, nine and t uh, 8 and 9 and work further on skill sets to improve those weaknesses, that the skill we possess with our non-dominant hand will be barely noticeable compared to the skill we would have possessed if we went through the lessons using our dominant hand.